Welcome to Mogni TV. Today we're going to talk about light and shine. Light and shine is an extremely versatile effect that should be part of any VJ's toolkit. It will make it really easy to instantly spice up any text or logos to make them dynamic, vibrant and really gorgeous. While the controls for light and shine are pretty straightforward and very easy to use out of the box, there's a lot of depth to the effect. So I'm just going to dive in and go into some of the tips and tricks that I suggest you experiment with when you're using the effect to make the most out of it and really make it your own. So here we are in Resolume and I've got my logo, which is a PNG file with alpha you could convert this to dxv to be a bit more efficient if you want but i'm using a png to show you how quick this is you might be handed over a dj logo and you just want to spice it up a bit give it some vibrancy maybe extrude it a bit before you do any of that with logos or branding always check that it's okay because brands can have issues with you manipulating their logo in any shape or form i'm going to trigger a background gradient so that you can see what the alpha channel is doing here i'm going to drag light and shine effect over it let's go through the presets quickly so we go basic neon, bevel, bronze, drive in, extrude, ice, outline, bread hot, stencil, and sunset. All these presets can be used as a starting point to manipulate the effect into whatever it is that you are after. There's a lot more that you can achieve than what's available straight out of the preset, especially when you start animating some of the parameters, as we'll see in a second. Let's go through the settings. First of all, we've got this auto mask to use mainly if you're using this on content that hasn't got an alpha channel. If you don't know what an alpha channel is, that is transparency. So in this case, my logo, it's just got the eye and the type and there is nothing else. The rest is transparent. If you've got something which is basically got a dark background, then you can use the auto mask to use the effect. You can experiment with this on video clips and see how it performs. It's very interesting as so you can get all kinds of textures. Next, we've got our two color settings here. One's the fill, which is the inside. And then you've got the neon, which is the glowing color that we've got there. So, I mean, you can play about with whatever you want color wise to get the color scheme that you want. Next, we've got the neon level, which brings up the neon tube. Then you've got the neon invert, which changes where the neon is placed. Let's make the neon tube uh, a bit fatter with the neon girth. Now we can invert so it's on the inside or it's on the outside. The halo is the colored glow that goes with the neon tube and the spread is how far we want it. So pretty tight around the logo or you can spread it out to get a more diffused effect. The highlight level are the whites on it. We can make this a bit more evident with the highlight amount. So as you can see, I can bring it up there. So it brings those nice kind of glossy lines and lighting effect to it. Like the neon tube, the highlights also go an invert button, which changes the way it works. So you can see it's going on the outside outlining the logo. And if you invert, it does the inside of it. The amount will change how much of this highlight we've actually got. Specular changes the reflection. So if we move that up and down, you'll see how it goes from just a very basic embossed kind of effect on the inside of the logo to make it a bit more textured, more glossy. The shadow is the drop shadow that goes underneath the logo. And that's pretty much it for the control. So as you can see, very compact and very immediate to use. Another great use for light and shine is text. It works great with Resolume's text source, which I've got on this clip. Let's just tweak this a bit. And now we can put a light and shine over the text. That's the effect straight out of the box. Let's turn it into this. First, look at the text block settings I've got here. You can copy them if you want. We've got the outline color, which is irrelevant at this point in time because we're changing it with the light and shine. But then we've got outline width, which I'm just going to manipulate. So you see the change in effect. So it goes from that to that you can embolden text very easily just with the outline width when you've got light and shine which actually adds a lot of versatility and how much control you've got over how your text is displayed 
Same with Gloa, you can see the bevel grows. So it's incredible the amount of different effects that you can achieve with that. Let's get into the details of light and shine. You can look at what I've got here. Basically, I've animated the neon halo with an envelope. Uh, I've also got the specular animated with an LFO envelope on it. This achieves this really dynamic, vibrant, shiny, glossy effect. A great tip here, whenever you've animated the effect and you've got something that you think is great and that you might want to recall at the touch of a button, save it, save it, save it. I'll say again, save it. Go to your presets and then go to save and it'll save it with all the animation settings that you've just placed on it. The next time you've got a boring text that you've just dropped, go to your effects and I've saved that previous one, a specular task, just throw it in there and there you go. Instantly, if you combine this with saved text effects, so you've got your choice of fonts and styling within the text, then uh, there you go. That's a great time-saving workflow tip for you. A very quick trick that you can always use is the neon invert and the highlight invert. If you assign BPM or any other animation setting to it, and you can do the same with the highlight invert. So if we go to BPM sync, and then again, we just make it a bit faster. You can create all kinds of flickery, shiny effects. You can play about with the amount of glow, for example, and the halo on it. What light and shine is great to achieve all these effects that I've been showing you so far. It's also really good to do more simple and basic things from a stencil kind of effect to just a colored outline that you've got a very quick control over and that you can animate parameters very quickly. I'm going to go through some settings. I'm going to have the effect on one side and the settings on the other. I'm not really going to explain much. You can stop the video and look at the settings. Subtle pulsating light sign basic outline, a pulsing neon sign, that's all slightly glossy emboss. This is a pulsing stencil. Hopefully by now you can see the amount of potential that this effect has, but there is some more. Check this out. Although it might be stating the obvious, be aware that you can stack light and shine on top of itself. So you can have more than one instance of light and shine to achieve this extreme effect play about experiment and find out all those sweet spots of all these magical things that you can achieve with light and shine as an example i've got those two instances stacked here and look at what happens if i just turn on the auto mask on the second one I guess you can see the potential for finding some incredible effects. I really think that light and shine is what the most useful and versatile effects for Resolume. It should be in every VJ's toolbox because it allows you to do a lot of things that would take an awful lot of time to do in something like After Effects, but there's still more. While light and shine was created predominantly to spice up texts and logos, it also works really well with other content, especially in grayscale. I've got here Audio Fluid, which is a generative source, which creates this fluid simulation. Now, you can get so much more if you put light and shine on top of it. Just look at this. When you're using light and shine on this kind of content, remember to click on the auto mask button because otherwise you don't get the full effect. You'll get more of this kind of thing. But anyway, it's up to you. You can experiment with it on or off. I hope this video has been useful and that you can see the huge potential that light and shine has to make your workflow a lot easier, a lot better and a lot more efficient.